All right, a security carol. It is near the holidays, so I thought we would do something a little bit different than the traditional uh, uh, boring security talk. So, gather round friends, and I shall tell you a tale. It was a bleak December morn one year ago today that I was visited by three specters. <laughs> but these were not the ghosts of some Yuletide holiday. What with their message of goodwill for all mankind and all that good stuff, this story isn't going to end with me flipping Substack a Bitcoin and having him buy us all a Christmas goose. Plus, no Tiny Tim, sorry. That being said, I, w I totally was visited by three otherworldly messengers that night, the ghosts of security past, present, and future. So press close, friends. For the night is dark, ignore the fact that it's like 2 p.m., and even now I can sense their ghastly presence roaming these halls. I was a different man then. I bore little mind, uh, as I was a puppet, to security needs. I was pissing the night away playing EverQuest, uh, and a cold wind swept through my office. The chill went up my spine, uh, along with a sense of foreboding. But I chalked it all uh, up to a bit of underdone potato and a bad can of Red Bull. Uh, I said a bad can, not a big can. <laughs> but uh, as soon as I rose and shut the door, a ghastly countenance uh, known to me swam up from the dark. <laughs> Ebenezer Baldwin, it said to me. Sony? I, I mean, Sonny, I gasped. Is that you? Yes, Baldwin. I have come to warn you about the grim consequences of your actions. For you have not dedicated yourself to security, you will end up like me, completely owned, and dragging your vulns and busted-ass modules around with you for all eternity. Three ghosts will visit you tonight. Heed their words. Oh, you mean like a Christmas carol? Uh, meh, more like Scrooged. Uh, but keep an eye out anyway. And he was gone. <laughs> So, sometime later, I scarcely returned to my labors when the window blew open and the first spectral visitor floated in on the breeze. <laughs> on his feet, he wore rollerblades, and from his belt dangled uh, a jangling nest of lockpicks. Ignore the fact that that's a lineman's handset. Baldwin, he said, I am the ghost of security past. I have come to warn you not to forget the lessons you have learned from hackers past. Uh, confidentiality, integri integrity, availability, and non-repudiation. Mind you, Baldwin, the air gapped. The air gap. Least some fool gank your laptop and pretend to be you. <laughs> Hit the bricks, ghost, I told him. I already, uh, I already know that 99% of all security issues that you're going to run into have been solved in other languages already. The ghost looked shocked, even, though, uh, even through his otherworldly pallor. What, seriously, he asked? Yeah, check it out, I said. So, at this point, I decided to uh, pontificate to uh, said Dade Murphy from Hacker's Ghost. Uh, many problems in security uh, have uh, already been solved. Uh, one, you know, we're standing on the shoulder of giants uh, in Node. Uh, we are a, a very uh, young uh, uh, community and language and platform. And... Sometimes I like to go back. Uh, I actually have a, a, a book that I forgot to bring up here. It's like The Fundamentals of Secu Computer Security from 1994. And it basically has all of the cool shit in it that we talk about in security every day. Like, and you know, it's been going on forever. These principles sort of uh, have existed. And so I, I'd like to just kind of remember th what those fundamentals are. And the, and the fact is that when you go to uh, implement things in your application, chances are you're going to be uh, looking at uh, or are using these 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 concepts, or building off of these these building blocks, uh, and they may seem simplistic, but they're 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 rather important. Uh, and the first one is confidentiality, right? Confidentiality, uh, the security of data in transit and at rest, uh, and it's something that that yeah, uh, TLS. We all know TLS is broken and and whatever. But anyway. Um, so security of, uh, of data in transit and at rest. But I like to think, what, what about in use? What about in memory? Um, uh, and, and one thing about confidentiality um, that we have to remember is that sometimes we're running in a shared environment and we do have, uh, uh, or we have a sandbox environment. I ran into something interesting that uh, just after, everyone familiar with Heartbleed? When that, holy shit, yes. So it had a logo and like a website and that's why all you know about it, so that's cool. Um, uh, uh, so after Heartbleed, I was like, how does this, how does this impact Node? What's, what's some interesting patterns in Node? And I was like, new buffer, and so I was like, cool. Buffers aren't zero filled, 
when you uh, when you say new buffer and you say new buffer and a length and like you just get some you get some cool random data back and I was like uh, John and I were talking uh, uh, after that and I was like I want to see this pattern in real life so I started looking at Node Core and no they kind of truncate things and couldn't find any things were but things were being leaked um, a while back we had a client engagement we actually ran into this in a sandbox environment where you could run new buffer, you just run buffer and just get back data and you could leak out all kinds of memory and it was fantastic. Uh, so I've actually seen this, uh, so it's something to know about, so zero filling buffers if you're not, uh, is, is cool. So that's, uh, you know, confidentiality of data sort of in use. Uh, the next one being integrity, right? So integrity of data uh, being read or written to um, by a subject. Uh, who here, um, how, many, how many integrity, formal integrity models do you think exist? Everyone for one, raise your hand. Two, three, three, Matthew's right. And there's probably more, but there's, there's three in this, this that, that are sort of like the famous ones. There's a model called the Biba model and the Bell Lapidula model and the Clark Wilson integrity model. There's freaking mathematical models about integrity that, exi that have existed for years and years and years about, about applying integrity to your application. A subject, an identified subject that you can prove uh, is an authenticated subject, uh, it, there's, there's rules for reading or writing depending on a higher integrity level or lower integrity level. If you need to go implement these things, those models already exist. And now you know about them, and I'm not going to explain them anymore because you can look them up, and there's math. So, uh, one thing with uh, integrity that we find, and something we're finding a lot in the engagements that we're doing, in the modules that we're, we're testing and assessing, is that input validation is just, you know, sort of crap. And there's a good module, <coughs> there's Joy. Joy's a great module, it's the best module that I've found, I think, to do just input validations for, for typing. What? I was just, yay, Joy! Oh, Joy, all right. Yay. So, uh, <laughs> The other thing, the other thing that I've had a, kind of a, a struggle with with the Node Security project with like input validation is, is let's say you build a tiny composable little module that, that takes in some input and then does a child process dot exec. Is that is that vulnerable to, to command injection? Yes, depends on the context. And so, do we report that as a as a as a vulnerability to that that project or an advisory on the, the site or not? It all, it, it sh sh the, valid the input should be validated or it should be using you know, like exact file or something. But it's, something, it's just something to think about. Um, and if I haven't mentioned this, it's sort of going to be just random musings from the security guy. So uh, mm -hmm. availability, the last, the last sort of, of the triad that, that the security industry likes to tout as being the big three. Um, availability, this is the most uh, sort of heartfelt aspect of security. Like when shit's down, you feel it. When something isn't available or 500s, you feel it. And we have, uh, you know, in, in Node, we have, you know, this async thing, just like in the first talk was mentioned, like, like uh, you know, that's like the Node, the node way, right? Well, we've, we still have this event loop that we can block. Uh, and if you, if you say, you know, call process.next tick recursively a whole bunch of times, um, that you're going to get your event loop blocked. If you, if you call, uh, if you have n number of elements that are passing like async.parallel, you should use parallel limit instead, right? You're going you're gonna to end up with, with availability problems and, and that's why streams are so wonderful and, and dat is cool because it can just chug on stuff and never quit. Um, but yeah, availability is like, like, it's just something to think about when you're, when you're designing the systems that you're building. Um, and there's, there's, there's others too like non-repudiation where you can prove that a message was from a person. And there's, there's these, there are these sort of core concepts. Uh, good resources, uh, of course, shameless plug from the Node Security Project, but OWASP.org has a lot of good stuff. However, when you go there, you're going to see, you're going to be like, this is PHP. Wah, this is Java. Wah, you flip the table and you're going to be like, this has nothing to do with Node. Well, this, you can ignore that fact and try to apply those patterns in Node. If you do, write a freaking blog post and tell us about it and we'll link it so that we start having these patterns showing up uh, in Node. So with that said, we now move on to the ghost of security present. Uh, after I finish my master class on the subject of those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it, the first ghost disappeared. But I had no sooner returned to my task uh, that a great cacophony announced the arrival of another ghost. He piled straight into the door frame, which would have hurt if he had been corporal, uh, because he was too busy frantically swiping at his laptop. 
Uh, he wore a gray hoodie and a pain expression. Uh, hey, he said, I, I'm supposed to be here to uh, warn you about the grim necessities of security present and all that. But uh, I really have no idea what the damn problem is or what I'm doing here. Dude, I said, glancing at his laptop, I see your problem already. Um, you need to actively monitor self-report vulnerabilities and keep up with the community in general. You're the ghost of security present, right? Uh, I'm supposed to be, he said forlornly. Well then listen, I'll tell you about it and why it's so important. So this is where I go off about the Node Core security project, or Node, <laughs> Node Core security process. Um, I submitted, and I would love people to put comments on here, uh, this particular pull request and ask why it hasn't been adopted in Core yet. Uh, this pull request is six months old. I asked Core to uh, adopt uh, a security process in which it, it basically communicated to you uh, how you would know about when security uh, releases uh, uh, were published and um, you know maybe how they were going to deal with like new V8 uh, vulnerabilities and how they're going to pull them in. Um, so, uh, and how all that was going to be communicated and executed and, and so we wouldn't have um, issues there. Well, there's nothing official. I'm, I'm hopeful for IOJS personally, uh, given the, the, the goals that they've set forth on that, which uh, I will be contributing the same damn thing to that repository as well. And you'll respond, he promises, right there. Uh, so this is, this is talking about uh, security presence. So we talked about past. And that, and we, and so, so once you've learned sort of your 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 past things, and you, you're coming to present, um, you, you, this is all about keeping up. This is all about understanding what's going on in the community. And one thing that I that I wanted to mention, uh, with permission, is that uh, what npm is doing. npm is a huge part of our ecosystem in Node, right? Like the majority of like. No course cool and everything, but like the majority of the happenings are like, it's like the modules. The 80% of what you're building is, is, is all somebody else's modules, somebody else's code. Uh, and it runs on this infrastructure uh, by NPM. Uh, and I think there's like a pile of them are here, so that's cool. Um, and they actually, like, you may not know it. They've written some blog posts about it. Um, they care a very uh, great deal about the security of the infrastructure of that from in terms of availability, uh, security. Ever since we started working with them, uh, even when it was an o just, just an open source project years ago, um, they've taken uh, great sort of pains to respond well, take action, uh, be accountable for security. And uh, that's been through um, the whole process of how they've built and designed stuff through the new, the new uh, NPM www. Um, that's gone through extensive uh, auditing and testing from uh, third parties, and a as well as uh, the new sort of the new registry stuff coming up, uh, they care a great deal to make that uh, happen. And I think that uh, um, I guess they should be applauded for that. That's that's sort of unprecedented, um, I think. So. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. There you go. Okay. So the other thing when you're talking about keeping up with security um, present, you're talking about also known vulnerabilities. This is sort of the shameless plug for like the Node Security Project and like understanding like whose code you're running uh, in production and is that bad or not. Um, if you're not familiar with the Node Security Project, there's basically this, this tool uh, called NSP that you can install, run it against a package file, a shrink wrap file. It'll tell you if there's known uh, known sort of blacklisted modules. If there's things that, that like this version has a known vulnerability. Um, of course, you may not have that vulnerability because you're using it differently, but it's still, this is a good idea, right, to, to, to know about what's, what's going on there. Uh, there's another one I didn't put in here that I'll mention called RetireJS that uh, keeps track of like your client side code apps. Is your Angular version out of date? You're using some stupid helper that's vulnerable. Those things, it's really good. Um, another way that I personally keep up with uh, things going on with my dependencies. Uh, my dependencies happen to be the entire module base that's in NPM because of the Node Security Project. Uh, I wrote an app basically to um, <coughs> keep track of all of the issues in GitHub and check them for keywords. So keep up on your projects. Know when security related issues are opened. Uh, we do this and constantly monitor it so we, uh, so we can get feedback. Uh, so that's, that's some things to just sort of keep up on the community, things that are going on in the community um, with security. 
So, after the ghost of security present thanked me for and departed, I began to grow anxious. After all, I'd seen this movie before, and I knew what was coming next. The room darkened, and a mist-like ichor began to drift across the floor. A figure who looked not altogether uh, unlike myself, although it looks more like a, a Mel Gibson Sith Lord, um, emerged from the shadows, his face shadowed by a great hood. In one hand, he held a uh, Sith uh, scythe. Uh, he intoned, gliding towards me in an unearthly gait. Dun, dun, dun. I've come for, with fell tidings. No matter what you do, no matter how you could try to prepare for the unexpected, you can't. For every seven layers of security you set up, eight will be hacked. For every vulnerability you find, ten more shall spring up in their place. Lament, mortal, for there is no way to prepare for the unpreparable. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit, I said. <laughs> so, yeah, thou shalt wait. What? So, it's true. You, can, you can't prepare for everything, but security necessarily isn't about that. You can't, uh, it's not just going to happen when you try to predict everything. Um, but it's more about doing everything you can to set people up for success. Uh, here, listen. So the ghost says, <coughs> thanks, man. The ghost says you can't, uh, you know, keep up with uh, with security. You can't predict the future. That's true. Like, you can do all of these great things in security, and you're still going to make a mistake. We're still human. Uh, that's fine. That's 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 what it's about. Security is a process. It's not a destination. It's that uh, the Penrose stairs where you're just going to kind of keep. Climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing forever and just incrementally get better. That's what it's all about. It's about applying security in every single one of these steps in your design phase, in your build phase, in your deploy phase, in your test phase, in your production and monitoring. If, you're, if, you're, if the only thing you're doing is hiring a company to do pen testing and catching your security bugs in production, you're doing it wrong. Sure, I love the business, but no, you're doing it wrong. You have to push, you have to take the, that advice and start pushing it back towards the developers, pushing it back towards the, the the, the front end of your cycle. The other thing I'm going to harp on is audit logging. It's not done well enough, I don't think, in the majority of applications and settings. And traditionally, what I hear um, in larger enterprises, I hear that's an ops problem. Let ops worry about monitoring and detection. We just build an app, they run it. That's bullshit, right? What you have to enable them as a developer. You have to give them the who did what, when, and what was the result. You have to enable them to have the tool, to have the data, to make the to make the decisions. If you're going to put that burden onto them. And lastly, uh, run fire drills. The one of the biggest things you can do is just sit down and have that that sort of silly theoretical discussion, that fire drill of of what happened if this was abused, what would happen if this was unavailable, what would happen if this was hacked. How would we respond to clients? What logs would we need? What would we have to access? How would we respond? If you do that, you're going to stop trying to predict the future, and you're going to start implementing those controls back now and have an ability sort of to respond to those future events. Uh, I'll use the word future-proof, I guess. Um, so with that, the last ghost departed. And although I had imparted knowledge unto each of them, I felt that I had learned a great lesson myself about what's important and what's not when it comes to the great mystery that is security. The end. <laughs> Mike Spiegel wrote all that. Uh, Jamie uh, Robles, uh, Robles did all the art and uh, Ben Acker did puppet thingies. <laughs> so, thanks Ben.